It's Wednesday, December 20th, 2023. A lot to talk about today. Make sure to like this video. If you want to support this channel, support the message, just like the video. It's going to help with the algorithm. It's going to help the algorithm to share uh, this, this channel, this specific show. We're going to continue to wake people up. So make sure that you like the video today. Now, getting into a few things. I know that there are a lot of people around this time of year thinking about doing a New Year's resolution. And they start that on the first day of January. Typically, uh, I would tell people, start your New Year's resolution right now. Don't even wait till January. Start it right now. And I'm going to just give you a little bit uh, of advice today from what I'm thinking. And I don't like to give too much advice. I like to just have people really think for themselves. But every now and then, I like to give a little bit of advice. And the advice today is, and I've said this many times in the past, surround yourself with good people. Surround yourself with real people. There are a lot of fake people out there. There's a lot of people, you know this as well as I do already right now, but a lot of people can't admit it. A lot of people you know aren't really your friends. A lot of people you know would never back you up. You know, I was training with uh, Elias the other day, and you know, we train three, four hours a week. And I mean, I was really beat. I was really, really just like just done. I, I couldn't push anymore. Training jujitsu for anybody out there that doesn't know, I, I train jujitsu three, four hours a week uh, with Alias, third degree black belt. But you, you know, it, it, just using the analogy of just jujitsu and just being completely gassed out, nothing left in the tank, completely winded, uh, just completely spent. Alias just says, you can't quit three more minutes, three more minutes. And I'm, I'm beginning to just quit. I, I, I just have nothing left. Two more minutes. Come on, man. Two more minutes. Don't quit. Don't quit. One more minute. One more minute. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. And this to me is another example of, of a real friend, having somebody in your group that has skills. Um, that is going to make you better, that's going to push you, that's not going to allow you to quit. Whether it's jujitsu or uh, your work or what you believe in or a passion, uh, whatever it might be, surround yourself with people who are not going to let you quit, who push you uh, through barriers that you didn't think you could push through. These are the people that you need to be surrounding yourself with. People that just are not going to allow you to fail. They're going to push you. And these are the people, again, th that I surround myself with. And, and look, that doesn't mean I have 100 people in my circle. I have a very small circle, but the circle I have are real people, people walking the walk, people that get out to the range, uh, people who are training on the mats, people who are in the gym, people who are preparing with food and water, security, all that stuff, people who are walking the walk, people who have a relationship with God. These are the people who will not let you down, who are not going to quit, who are going to push you. The minute there's trouble, these are the people who have your back. There's too many people out there who are fake. You know, I know that there's a lot of people that make these videos and, and you know, oh, this is going to happen. The world's coming to an end. That's going to happen. And I look at these people and they look so unprepared, so weak. I wonder what their EDC is. And for anybody who doesn't know what that is, your everyday carry, what are they carrying every day when they're out in the streets of America, when they're out there filming, when they're out there shopping, when they're out there running errands? What, what is their EDC? What if something goes wrong? What are they going to do? What, what, what do they go to? They have absolutely no training, no EDC, but yet they're telling you the world's going to come to an end, that things are getting really bad. But these are the people who tell you to buy gold, buy silver, who don't have any gold or silver. Uh, they tell you to have security, but they don't have any security. Uh, they tell you to go train and get in shape, but they're, they're not in very good shape from what I can tell, from what I can see. And so, you know, we have a lot of people out there who aren't walking the walk, but are telling everybody else to walk the walk because they want the clicks, they want the attention, they want the views. I get it. Follow and, and surround yourself with real people, ladies and gentlemen. Real people. Uh, I try to do the best that I can. I know I could do better. I, I know that I, I need to improve, but I can tell you every day, my EDC, uh, when I walk, my dog, when I go to the store, when I'm out, I can guarantee you, 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm armed. That's walking the walk. I can guarantee you that I have a year uh, supply of food for my family. Uh, I can tell you, tell you that uh, I'm training at the gym, jujitsu, at the range. Uh, I'm buying gold and silver with my own money. Nobody has, you know, just sits here and gives me, you know, free gold and silver. I buy it with my own money. Uh, a few people have made nice donations of silver over the years. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. For, but for the most part, 99% of the silver and gold uh, that, that I own, um, I had to pay for out of my own pocket. No discounts. I pay for it myself because I believe in it. But there's other people out there trying to you know, sell gold and silver, and they have absolutely none. So it's, it, it's, it, 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 it makes you think about the people in your circle too. How awake, how prepared are they? What do they bring to the table? What kind of skill sets? If, there, if something went down, do they have your back? Or are they going to run? More than likely, most of them are going to run. So New Year's resolution. Get rid of the losers, get rid of the, the fakes, get rid of the brokies, and surround yourself with solid people. You may have to dump 10 friends to get one or two real good ones, but it's worth it. Now, I want to get through a, a few of these articles. There's a bunch of them. Uh, one from The Hedge today. You expect me to tip for that? Question mark. Americans are tired of tipflation. 72% said they opposed automatic service charges that appear on their bills. Consumers are irritated by tipping recommendations. Have you, have you been somewhere where it says, oh, you could tip 15%, 18%, 20%, uh, how about 0%? Because when I walk up to a counter to pick up my food, I don't think anybody deserves a tip. Uh, somebody taking my order in a drive-thru does not deserve a tip. The quality of service I get dictates the type of tip I'm going to leave when I'm at a restaurant. Uh, when I'm at a restaurant, I don't need to hit an iPad uh, to say if I'm going to leave 15, 18, 20, 25% or, or 30%. I'm going to tip uh, on the service I get. I, I think I tip very, very well. But what it does is it's putting pressure on people like walking up to you saying, how much do you want to leave? Do you want to leave us a tip? Or having somebody take your order in a drive through saying, oh, would you like to leave a tip a day today? No, I wouldn't. I'm not going to because I didn't tip uh, two or three years ago for somebody taking my order at a drive through or making me a coffee at a coffee house. And I'm not going to do it now. And so we all have to start standing up to this. And, and the reason this is going on is because these establishments don't want to pay higher wages to their employees. I'm, I, I get it. They're paying enough already. and They don't want to raise prices of, of their food anymore on the menu. I get it. But the answer is not trying to just squeeze more and more out of the consumer by having the consumer have to tip for a service that really doesn't deserve a tip in all reality. Now, if you're a waiter or a waitress or a bartender and you give great service, well, yeah, you should get a, a fair tip. There's no doubt about it. But I wonder uh, if people are seeing less tips now with the condition of the economy. I wonder how people are tipping. Why, and again, why are half these people giving a tip in the first place? When you're ordering at a drive through or picking up for takeout or you're just getting bad service, why would you leave a tip? So comment down below about that. What, what are your thoughts on tipping? You know, are, are you tipping for good service? Have you said no way for bad service? Um, do you just you know, uh, thumb your nose to people asking for a tip uh, for a pickup or making you a coffee? I mean, it's really ridiculous what's going on here. Uh, 36 million customers affected in massive Comcast data breach. Well, Merry Christmas. Your data has been breached. Uh, this was announced Monday, but the breach took place December 6. Usernames, uh, hashed passwords, and possible other information was breached. So uh, make sure that you change your passwords, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on a regular basis, especially uh, if you are a customer uh, with Comcast. But isn't it interesting that this happened on the 6th and just they, two days ago, they announced this. And it makes you think, again, how safe is your money and your data on the internet? You know, people do all their banking. They do all their transactions. Their whole life is on a computer. And just think how quickly it could all just disappear. I was uh, at Jersey Mike's today getting a sandwich. And they were having issues uh, with their cash register because they were having internet trouble. 
So you just think how quickly things uh, could be shut down, how transactions could shut down. Basically, the whole financial uh, institutions in America could be shut down. The way we do business, uh, just doing day-to-day -day transactions could shut down very easily. And we're going to see, I think, huge cyber attacks in America. We're seeing them every day, and they're serious ones. Uh, government facilities, uh, water treatment plants, schools, hospitals, retailers, Comcast, goes on and on and on. At some point, they're going to get so serious that it is really going to begin to affect people um, when they cannot access their bank accounts for you know, 24, 48, 72 hours. Uh, money begins to disappear. The, it, it, we're going to see some serious problems. Dow Jones closed down 475 points today. NASDAQ was down 225. So what was it? Did in investors cash in on some profits? Um, were markets just overbought and this was just a natural reaction of the markets? Or is there something more to it? Uh, I'm still in shock with how the markets are believing in these three rate cuts. Now that the markets are even believing in maybe six rate cuts in 2024. The markets are just believing in this euphoria now. And I'm really taken back that the markets uh, are just going all in, that there's going to be at least three, maybe more, uh, up to maybe six rate cuts in 2024. I, I just don't see how they can do it, ladies and gentlemen. I, I think the markets... I think the markets are getting very delusional, and I think a lot of investors are, are delusional. I think they're drunk on the euphoria, and I think they better be very, very careful because what if the Fed does not reverse course? What if the Fed did the opposite? What if the Fed began to raise rates again in 2024? There's no guarantee. Nobody has a crystal ball here, but I don't see how in the situation we're in right now, how the Fed could even think about cutting rates. Uh, at this point. I just don't think they can do it, but we shall see. If they do, then we're going to have even bigger problems. Market continues to shrug off efforts by Fed policymakers to push back on rate cut expectations. You know, again, uh, Jerome Powell really effed up. You know, markets are expecting something, and what if that expectation doesn't put, take place? I, I, think, uh, I think a lot of people in the Fed now are questioning what Jerome Powell just did. But I think it's uh, very confusing. I think it's misleading. But the markets are going to believe what the markets believe. Billions are on the line for lenders as White House finalizes credit card late fee cap. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau could finalize its rule, rule propose, proposal to reduce credit card late fees to $8. This could begin in January. Credit card companies generate $14.5 billion a year in late fees while they're charging you 22% interest or higher. This could save consumers $12 billion each year by capping late fees. What this will probably do, unfortunately, is just incentivize consumers to be late. So if they know that they're not going to have to pay a 50, I don't know what, what the late fees are, $50, $75, whatever they are. If consumers believe now that they're only going to have to pay $8, I'm, 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 sure that many of them would be like, eh, $8, we'll pay it next month. We'll just, we'll just skip it. So let me know what you think about that. But think about the money generated, $14.5 billion just in late fees alone. Think about how much money is being made off the back of the consumer who is being so robbed right now with 22 plus percent interest, interest on a credit card, 29 plus percent on a retail card. And they, they, they got people coming and they got people going. Mortgage demand slips despite another drop in interest rates. I looked at bankrate.com today, 30-year fixed rate, 7.08%. Uh, that is down 23 basis points since last week. Uh, applications for a mortgage are down 18% year over year. Sales are down 7.3% year over year. 12.1% who apply for a mortgage are denied. And that number is only going to increase. WolfStreet.com. Here comes the new listings of existing homes. Price drop further. WolfStreet.com. Existing single-family home sales dropped to 387.6 
$1,000, down by 6.3% from the peak in June of 2022. Prices of new homes uh, sold by home builders down 18% from the peak a year ago. So remember, uh, that's 18% plus. They're doing buy downs. They're throwing in, in incentives like uh, granite countertops, uh, appliances, landscaping, things like that. So in all reality, new home, uh, new home prices are down over 18%. That's the price that we see. We're not seeing the buy down. We're not seeing the incentives that are being added to that. So this just uh, reminds us um, how far behind the existing home seller is right now. New listings in November rose to 354,900. They had also risen in August when they normally drop. Active listings rose to 754,800 homes, highest since August of uh, 2020. Active days on market now, 52 days, the highest since March. Inventory for sale, 1.13 million homes. That is up 1% year over year. Demand has absolutely collapsed. From 2022, we see home sales down 7.3%. From 2021 to right now, home sales are down 39.7%. From 2019 to right now, sales are down 28.2%. From 2018, sales are down 26.7%. The real estate industry is a dead man walking. Anyone in the industry now is feeling the pain. Very, very few people uh, are going to have a good year for 2023 and less people in the industry are going to have a good year in 2024. It is going to be a just a, a devastated industry to be in and that is real estate. Think about it. If you're in the mortgage business, appraisal business, you're a real estate agent, you're a broker, think, the entire industry is just being destroyed right now. So very, very few people are going to make a very, very good living in real estate, especially in 2024. And, you know, so many agents just telling me, not in my area, not happening here. Well, if it's not happening right now, it will be very, very soon. And I say that because you're going to see uh, the deterioration of the U.S. economy continue. You're going to see massive layoffs uh, coming in 2024. Uh, inflation is not going away. Less people can qualify for a home. Uh, their credit's being destroyed. You have to have a job. It, and I don't see interest rates uh, going back to 3 or 4% ever again. So it is going to be uh, an absolute... Uh, destructive year in the real, real estate industry. October was the second biggest month of foreign selling of U.S. stocks ever. Officials dump treasuries as gold reserves soar. This on the hedge yesterday. Think about that. And I, I think that's a great plan. I think we should all be doing that. Start dumping some dollars and buying some metal. That's probably the smartest thing people could do right now. That's not financial advice. Um, that's just Foreign, foreign, that's what foreign sellers are doing. They're dumping treasuries and they're buying gold. And I think that's a great strategy. And I'm going to dump some more of my dollars and buy some more gold because I believe that you have to bet against this debt. WallStreet.com, are foreign holders finally bailing out of the incredibly ballooning U.S. national debt? Here we go. Uh, so this one from The Hedge now, this one from Wolf Street. Who's going to buy all this debt, ladies and gentlemen? The world knows what's going on here. They see what's happening in the United States of America. They see a country collapsing. They see a first world nation now heading to a third world nation. They see uh, zero leadership in this country. They see the, the, the decaying morality in this country. They see the printing of money. They see the weaponization of the dollar. Who is going to buy this debt? These countries that are buying the debt have their own debt to worry about. The total amount of Treasury securities outstanding is approaching $34 trillion. Every one of these securities must be sold to someone, and foreign holders play a huge, mm -hmm. huge role, but a declining role. The top six financial centers, London, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Cayman Islands, Ireland, all decreased their holdings down to $2.22 trillion. China and Hong Kong reduced their holdings to $969 billion, now under a trillion dollars. It's happening, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening right before your very eyes. But too many people are blinded by the market euphoria 
blinded by football games, blinded by Hollywood, but they can be as blinded as they want to be. The gears are in motion, okay? The wheels are in motion. This train is not coming back. It is going down the tracks. The economic collapse.com. 62% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, and the bottom of the economic food chain is already collapsing. We're getting very, very close to some something very, very big, ladies and gentlemen. And you, you know, when you look at 62% of people living paycheck to paycheck, and, and that's the official number. The unofficial number is probably the real number, which is closer to 80%. How in the world are people going to survive what is coming? They have no skills. They're untrained. They're addicted to pharmaceuticals. Uh, they're addicted to, to football. Uh, they're in the worst possible physical shape of their life. Um, mental disorders, you name it. And these people, many of them living paycheck to paycheck. People are not ready for what's coming. And this is why I've said a million times, you're going to have a lot of people knocking at your door. And you have very, very serious decisions to make of who you're going to let in and who you're not going to let in. But remember, once you let these people in, they're probably never going to leave. They're going to eat your, your calories. They're going to drink your water. They're going to be a, a, a huge security liability. 40% of consumers living paycheck to paycheck have super prime credit scores. 57% who own credit cards are living paycheck to paycheck. 96% of shoppers say they plan to overspend. And these people are going to get what they deserve. It's coming. From November 1st to December 31st, uh, we're expected to see between $957.3 billion to $966.6 billion spent for holiday shopping. People just can't resist. They cannot stop shopping. They have a massive addiction from Amazon to the mall to you name it. They cannot stop spending and they're going to spend with money they don't even have. Half of consumers plan to take more, take on more debt to cover holiday expenses. Well, of course they are. Buy now, pay later plans, credit cards at 22.08%. Of course they're going to take on more debt. Um, while they make less money, they don't care. They don't even think about it. These people, this is a huge problem. And people will say, why do you care? Well, I care and you care because we're going to see more bailouts. We're going to see the banks going, well, everybody's defaulting on their cars. They're defaulting on the RVs. They're defaulting on their credit cards. They're defaulting on their homes. Then the automakers, you, you know, they can't pay their bills. They need money. Then the airlines are defaulting. They need money. And so if we just think like who cares about all this stuff? Well, guess who's on the hook? You're on the hook. I'm on the hook. The taxpayer's on the hook. And the taxpayer didn't even get paid back from the last bailout. And so they're going to tax you more, print more money, cause more inflation while you pay more in taxes. And your standard of living continues to go down and down and down and down. Your purchasing power continues to decrease. So who cares about all this overspending? I think we all better care. I mean, to, to sit there and, and just say, who cares? That is an ignorant comment. To just sit there and say, who cares? How ignorant is that? While your country, your government is overspending and this debt can never be paid back and your grandchildren are going to pay the price for this. And the average American cannot stop spending. It, this is a recipe for disaster. And the last article today from the Daily Mail Kim Jong-un brings daughter Kim Ju A, 10 years old, to watch the test of a ballistic missile that he says could hit the United States. So while we're all eating more food and getting bigger, slower, and more out of shape as we have no skills, as half the country is having difficulty even reading and adding basic math, 4 plus 4 and 5 plus 5, while we're watching football games while we're dreaming about being a reality star. Um, Kim Jong-un is building rockets that can hit America and ramping up his military. So while America checks out and just becomes zombies and sleepwalking through life, 
our enemies are not sleeping. Our enemies are extremely serious. You look at Iran, Russia, China, North Korea, many, many more. Our enemies are not sleeping while most Americans are sleeping. We cannot stop what's coming. Uh, we cannot stop the money printing. We're not going to stop the inflation, ladies and gentlemen. All we can do is the best that we can to protect ourselves and our families from what is coming. Don't depend on the police to protect you. You better depend on yourself. Don't depend on a bank to protect your money. You better be your own central bank. Don't depend on the U.S. dollar to be here uh, when it's lost 99% of its purchasing power. You better have real money. I'm going to leave it there today. Please comment down below about anything you want to comment on. Um, as we uh, head into this Christmas, it is really disturbing. Enjoy this Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, because I think the next one is going to look a lot different than this one. I hate to say it, it but enjoy this one. Eat well. Spend time with family, friends. Uh, enjoy the time and in, in, in the memories because I think next Christmas is going to look a lot different than this one, and I hate to say that, and I hope I'm wrong. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to train uh, defensive skills. I'll be at the range. I'm going to be at the gym. I'm going to continue to absorb knowledge. I'm going to continue to say my prayers, walk close to God, keep putting some food away, keep putting some water away, keep adding skills. Um, and one thing I will not do this year or next year is become complacent. Better yourselves. Surround your people who are going to better you. Better your friends too. Be an example. Push your friends. Make them better. Um, God bless America. God bless every one of you. Have a great evening. And as always, I look forward to speaking to each and every one of you.